Hello, family, friends, and patriots. Well, this is update number three in our efforts in the local area here in Colorado Springs to establish a resilient community, what we're ultimately going to call the shining city upon the hill, which we think Colorado Springs can become. We have been working this initiative through uh, the Road Church, and we had a meeting on Wednesday, and so I'm going to give you an update uh, what went on in that meeting and where we stand as we move forward. We had uh, a situational update. As you know, there is a lot going on out there. Georgia looks like it's going to declare a state of emergency due to the supply ch chain being broken. Uh, foods and those types of things in the stores are starting to become uh, scarce and they're starting to understand that indeed what's going on in the world is impacting our local supply chain which will impact our local uh, goods and services in almost all the cities across America before it's done. So what we're doing is kind of a necessity and we are moving out on it probably ahead of any other community uh, in the nation. Well, let's hope so. So we also, as you start anything, you've got to define roles. You need to define who's in charge of what, who has the authority to make decisions, what is the process. So we went over that this week as to what uh, can be provided at no cost, what's available uh, room-wise and administrative support-wise, and also just what we're going to have to do um, on our own, and that being Radical Resilience, uh, the organization that I am part of that's heading up this initiative and what we need to do um, if in the community as it expands uh, like I said who's going to have the authority to make those decisions and where is the funding going to come from in some instances lastly we uh, we got made sure that all this was uh, documented for upcoming events so we can start doing educational pieces and taking actions and getting it on a timeline so people understand where we're at, where we're going, and have something that we can evaluate it against as we hit intermediate goals and final objectives. So the first thing we talked about this week was we took it from the whole big uh, topic of food safety and food security down to just can, what can we do with the individual right now and get things started. One of the biggest things, as you know, is inertia. Every time you start a project and or start something new, you have to get over the fact that it's something new and people need to have some guidance as to what is it they can do to get the process started. Just get moving. So we talked about the food system this week and we talked about the fact that almost every house in the uh, community can do sprouting. You can get some, a shallow tray, buy seeds, and sprout right there in the windowsills of your own home. Everybody can do that and have microgreens that they can put on their sandwiches or on their salads. Uh, so start picking up a small portion of their food bill. The other thing is that uh, we have garden towers now coming in so we can start raising vegetables vertically. This allows people that are living in apartments or just have patios to put a garden tower on their patio and raise a garden vertically without having to have a big yard or a lot of space. And that works well. We've got four videos on how to do that all the way from assembling the garden tower to using it as a composting uh, facility. And in that vein, we have uh, 2,000 worms coming so that we can have 500 to put into our garden uh, tower and the rest of them to go to other people who have bought garden towers that want to do composting the area. We started looking at greenhouses this week and because we're here in Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs has a couple things that make greenhouses very difficult. The first one being the wind. And if it's not blowing out of the north, it's blowing out of the south or off the front range. And it always seems to be blowing when you're out of town or even in town. And uh, you've got to deal with a, a building that can handle winds up to 30, 40 miles an hour and not be ripped to shreds or blown over and collapsed due to the wind gusts. So we looked at, at that criteria and we also looked at the fact that here in Colorado Springs we have major climate shifts that will one day you'll have hail and snow and then it'll turn to rain and the next day you've got sunshine at 70 degrees out. So the, the the weather shifts a lot around here, and uh, with that can come some real damaging effects from the hail. I mean, hail as big as golf balls, and uh, one year there was as many as a thousand cars damaged in town due to one hailstorm, and all the greenhouses were totally shredded by the hail. So, how do you how do you take care of those two uh, 
criteria, I guess, for something to withstand uh, growing. Well, you get one that has material enough that'll not only let light in, but also withstand the wind and the hail. So we're kind of looking at geodesic domes that have uh, light sections to let it in, but will also be pretty firmly built and not just the standard plastic hoop house that goes over a metal frame. That doesn't seem to work real well around here. And uh, we don't want to have to have people invest money and then repeat doing it over and over again because the weather has damaged their facility and or the crop that's inside. Now we've already established and talked about the fact that we have a company here that is uh, processing, further processing, actually they're not doing the, the kills here, but they're further processing the beef uh, right here in Colorado Springs and for that we're doing a thing that we call a beef or a pork pool and that process is the fact that since we're getting most of the beef and the pork all from the same facility we know how they were raised and what criteria we've established which I gave them that they have to raise by before I will buy from them so they have to be uh, GEO free not on grains they have to be grass fed grass finished no antibiotics no growth hormones that is just the baseline criteria for the meats that we bring into this food system and we've been so far we have delivered uh, we put them in eighths so everybody gets a uh, an eighth everything's based upon that as the base uh, unit and it has steaks and roasts and hamburgers and then as you go to forests and one hassle all the way up to a whole cow the uh, the scale of that delivery goes up but basically it's all based upon a set uh, number of pieces that include a variety and aren't just okay you're getting a quarter and that quarter is what the rear quarter or the front quarter no it's a well balanced quarter half or whole based upon the eighth being the standard and we've been selling those uh, at eight dollars a pound that's cut and wrapped and delivered to the to the person who bought them so they can put them right there into their freezer and be ready to go and that's working really really well one of the things that we realize over the years that people have forgot how to do and we need to do classes on now is how do you do canning how do you do freeze drying I mean how do you do things like uh, jerky and, and how to make your meats uh, last a long time without having to put them in a freezer or having to do uh, you know some kind of a, um, a dry bag system that would will keep them uh, over a period of time so we're going to teach classes on that uh, and and have affiliates with uh, companies that make the equipment that might be necessary just like a uh, you know a vacuum machine so that people can buy those and get a substantial savings on them and put them in their home for use and all that is being discussed and aligned up right now the last thing is that uh, we're also looking at dry goods uh, we are looking at using Azure unfortunately its headquarters uh, burnt down this last week but the other sub uh, stations that have the wheats and the rices and the dry goods are all working just fine and here in Colorado Springs we had the largest drop in the nation last weekend at the church parking lot so people are buying dry goods and putting things away for the winter and actually for the next five years if they want to and then they have to learn how to rotate that stock through replace it and use it so it stays good so we've identified all that we're working it and it, it enables people and empowers them to have some say over what they spend their their money on what they put their time on and their allocation of resources and we think that's really good and that's a great initial step for a food system we then got looking at education and education is one of those things that goes throughout a community it's not only a formal edu education which we're looking at doing a classical education this next month we're going out to my father's world in Missouri and looking at the education base that they have that goes all the way from kindergarten all the way up through high school and beyond that we're looking as I said before at looking at uh, on-the-job training uh, you know apprenticeships and those types of things to take people further into their education world based upon their desires their desires and their uh, and their wants in other words if you want to be a mechanic then you go become an on-the-job uh, get on the job training at a, at a mechanic place so at a garage or like my son's doing out at the airport learning to be an airplane mechanic or you take an apprenticeship somewhere for an electrician or being a journey plumber 
All that's available and we plan to use all that as we set up a classical education which gets people educated and facilitates their ability to provide a living as they go forward uh, and grow uh, through the years into adulthood and on beyond. We, uh, we got talking about personal infrastructure and by this some people are like, what do you mean by that? Well, when I'm considering personal infrastructure, it's those things that support you where you live. You know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs says that you need to have a shelter, and that shelter needs to be something that you can retreat to if necessary. I mean, the government tried to make us, you know, shelter in place and stay home and not go anywhere. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what happens if the electricity goes out, if your water uh, quits uh, or, or runs low, which it is in many states, especially here in Colorado. Or you have uh, other issues that interrupt your ability to, uh, to maintain a place of shelter. You know, maybe you don't have, you have a coal-fired uh, furnace and for some reason the delivery of coal gets stopped or oil, uh, which could happen, especially due to the fact that, like we said when we started this today, there are supply chain problems and one of those is the transportation of those things. So we are looking at now, once again, Getting affiliates, providing the, uh, you know, providing the the products necessary to facilitate uh, mitigating those types of problems should they occur. We we looked at personal security. Uh, what we can do right now for personal security is to make sure that your computers are hardwired and that your passwords are protected. That's the initial steps. If your computers aren't hardwired, you can have Tempest. And Tempest is the the random transmission of signals that literally if you're sitting out in the street with the right type of equipment you can pick up on the signal and be able to decode exactly what a person is putting out over their computer so we are taking steps to hardwire everybody that desires it uh, their homes so that that just doesn't happen you know the economy is is a uh, is one of those things that everybody's concerned about right now. It's like, oh, we're in a recession, we're going into a recession. No, we're not in a recession, it's just a slowdown. Well, the truth of the matter is, I think with all the things that are going on in the world and the way the economy looks and the globalists trying to totally destroy the economy, I think ultimately we are going to have to uh, plan for an economy that is self-sufficient and local. And what does that mean? We're talking about setting up finance classes, uh, investment clubs, slow money, being able to invest in, things, invest in things like a processing plant so we can process our own beef and chickens right here under a uh, private membership association so that we don't have to follow rules and regulations that would stifle those initiatives. And, you know, and then lastly, we're trying to look at, at a local currency. And currency can take many forms. You can do barter, you can barter your time and skills with somebody else's time and skills, or we can even look at using hard currency such as gold and silver and now copper coins and setting up a system where you can exchange those for goods and services. That's going to take some time, but it can be done. We've been working with the government over these last couple of years and the focus has been uh, putting out a church voters guide which then would give people the knowledge they need to vote intelligently for the right type of candidate. Well, just getting people into the government that are the right kind of people doesn't necessarily stop the problems we see in the school where you have school unions that are still teaching things that are against what parents would like to have their ch children taught. Or HOAs, which have rules that are restrictive and don't give you the freedom you need with the property you own and the, the property that you pay taxes on. So we're encouraging that we still continue to get as many of our people, conservative people, into those uh, systems and then rewrite them so they facilitate the kind of living and the type of society that we believe is most necessary for a resilient community to thrive. Lastly, over the last uh, two years with COVID, we have had numerous people sick. We had over 400 initially uh, get sick in the church. We treated them and then we continued on to over 2,500 people over the next two years. We treated them basically with supplements and holistically and uh, building their immune systems through their, the food that they ate and this lifestyle they used, not going with the masking and going with the shot, which we know is dangerous and in many instances is deadly. So we're gonna to continue to build a healthy 
resilient community that has immune systems that will be ready for those things that might come in the future so people will stay healthy and be able to recover and live a productive life with the health that they need to do that. So that's kind of where we're at. Uh, obviously all this will take some uh, logistics of rooms. Uh, what you're seeing here, we have uh, purchased our own uh, production equipment and we have the ability to produce educational uh, videos. We will get those out to the net and we'll give you the link to the net uh, within the next couple weeks as we work on establishing websites and, uh, and pull downs underneath that for different subjects. Go Farm You is one of them. We're going to teach people how to uh, farm. We're going to teach them how to do business planning and those types of things. It'll all be under one leg of Radical Resilience, which will be the website that we're building. So the media will get to you. We also want to have hard media and electronic copies of that. So we'll be putting out manuals and books and having electronic copies of that. So as you become part of a uh, private membership association, you'll be able to sign in and access that equipment, or I should say, that uh, those manuals and, and those videos uh, to facilitate your learning in what area you have interest in. And lastly, we're gonna need administrative support. Uh, we're gonna have to take and uh, be able to copy, produce things, make copies, get them out over the net, uh, once again, to facilitate the underlying education that will go with each and every one of these areas. So that's it for today. I uh, appreciate you uh, joining me today. Uh, probably in another week, I'll give you an update as to where we're at and where we're going. And we'll just continue to move forward to have that uh, shining city on the hill and a radically resilient community uh, where everybody will feel independent and free to do what they choose according to their, uh, their beliefs. So thank you, and we will see you in a week.